Hi, this is Miss Delosier, and these are your notes on proteins. I'm going to try and keep these short, but I'm not making any promises, y'all. So proteins are the most structurally and functionally diverse group of macromolecules. Um, and so they have a bunch of different functions, and we need to talk about a bunch of them. So the first thing you need to know is that all enzymes are made of proteins. So enzymes are biological catalysts. So um, they do things like uh, they make DNA, they break down lactose, they are responsible for making your ATP. Uh, so anything that ends in this, this suffix ACE is an enzyme, and that means it's, it's basically doing something in your body. It's catalyzing some reaction. Um, they're also structural, so like collagen and keratin are structural proteins. Um, they are used for transportation. So hemoglobin is a protein in your red blood cells that moves oxygen, and you have protein channels in your cell membranes that move things in and out of your cells. They are used in cell communication pathways, so they're used as signal molecules, um, hormones like insulin are, are proteins. Um, some receptors, not all receptors, but some receptors are proteins, and they're antibodies. So we've been hearing a lot about you know, antibodies in the news lately. Well, antibodies are specific proteins that your body makes to go ahead and uh, defend. It's part of the immune response. And I'm not gonna go into it because these notes are long enough right now. You just need to know that antibodies are part of your immune response. And then movement. So some proteins are involved in movement, specifically actin and myosin. Um, so let's talk about protein structure. So proteins are polymers um, that are a specific type of polymer. They're called polypeptides. And they are made up of monomers, like all polymers are. And the, uh, the monomer of a, of a polypeptide is an amino acid. Okay, so an amino acid has, um, there's 20 different amino acids, um, and they have an amine group, they have a carboxyl group, and they have uh, what's called a functional group. So uh, this N uh, bound to the H2, this NH2 right there, that is your amine group, and the, the C double O O H that is your carboxyl group. You don't really need to know that. You just need to recognize that that's a, an amino acid. Um, and then they are, are also gonna have a, uh, a functional group. And the functional group is the only thing that's different between the 20 amino acids, and that just hangs off that center carbon. And so like R is just generic, like it could be like a giant thing, but it's just whatever is different between the amino acids that hangs off the R group. Um, so how do I form a polypeptide? Well, of course, you form it through dehydration synthesis, like you form all polymers. So I'm going to take one amino acid, and that one it happens to be glycine. And I'm going to take another one, and that one happens to be alanine. And I want you guys to notice that the glycine and the alanine have different R groups. Like one is just a hydrogen, and the other is a methyl group, right? That's what I mean by functional group. It's just what's hanging off in that circle at the top, right? Uh, so I'm going to remove the water, and then that's going to give me a uh, dipeptide, right, two peptides, uh, covalently linked together. But in proteins, we don't just call it a covalent bond. No, because proteins have to be difficult. We call it a peptide linkage, but it's just a covalent bond. It really is. But that's a peptide linkage. So if you hear something that says, oh, well, this face cream contains peptides, uh, that means it contains little short chains of amino acids. So. I mean, I don't know if we really need to pay that much more for expensive face cream because it has peptides in it. I don't know. So let's talk about protein structure and function because the reason that proteins can have so many different functions is because the structure of proteins varies so drastically. Um, and the reason is that the structure of a protein dictates the function. The structure dictates the function the structure dictates the function. Like, I, I can't stress how important that is. So the 3D structure is unique, and if it's altered, then that changes the function. So depending on whatever the overall 3D shape of your protein is, that's gonna determine what it does, right? So we have to talk about 
how that that works it's basically like a lock and a key like if you took a key and you bent your key or you filed part of your key off it's not going to open the same lock so there's four different levels of protein structure and i'm going to go over them super fast do not take notes on these i just need you to i need you to hear me say it i, I want you to try and understand it but um but this is this is like biochemistry, AP biology. This is related to anatomy and physiology because it determines level of structure. It is technically part of your course, but in no way, shape, or form am I gonna ask you about these on a test. All right, so there's four levels of structure and function. There's the primary structure. Uh, the primary structure is just the amino acid sequence, just the order of amino acids that you got. So like methionine, alanine, serine, lysine, that's it. That's all it is. It de it's determined by the actual DNA that's transcribed and made into a protein. That, that's transcribed in translation. It's just determined by the DNA transcription translation. Okay? So that's it. It's linear. It's covalent bonds held together by peptide linkages. The secondary structure is caused by local folding. Um, so you have short sections of the protein that fold and form hydrogen bonds between the amino and the carboxyl groups. So this doesn't involve the R group at all, right? What does that mean? I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Lozier. Basically, little sections form like this little spiral alpha helix or this little pleated beta sheet. That, that's all it means. So you're gonna get little short sections of your overall protein that fold up and make spirals and like little fan shapes. And so that's your secondary structure. It does form like a 3D structure, um, but like not the complete 3D structure. It just starts to, instead of being a straight line, it starts to spiral up in kink. Um, the next one is your tertiary structure. And your tertiary structure is like how the whole molecule folds up. And um, so like you end up getting like interactions between hydrophobic parts of the molecule and hydrophilic parts of the molecule. And so the hydrophobic parts wanna be together and the hydrophilic parts wanna be on the outside. And so it basically just folds up and you get um, a 3D molecule. Sometimes you get like some sulfur molecules or some charged R groups that are gonna go ahead and like form secondary bonds. No one cares about that right now, but basically it's just the 3D shape. So it kind of forms that 3D structure, the globular shape, the overall globular shape. Globular is actually a real word because like when we start talking about immunoglobins, they're talking about the globular shape. Okay, uh, and then quaternary structure, uh, that's the fourth level, is when you have like multiple polypeptides like hanging out together. So like for example, hemoglobin is actually made up of four protein subunits. It has two alpha subunits and two beta subunits and all four of those subunits go hang out together to make the hemoglobin protein which carries oxygen in your red blood cells. So. Um, and it's based on hydrophobic interaction. So basically just you want, the proteins want to go ahead and like if both of my palms are hydrophobic and they don't like water and I'm floating around in the cell, look, now I don't have to be around water. So that's all that means, hydrophobic interactions. So the, the quaternary structure is actually what determines the overall function of the protein. The final three-dimensional structure determines the function. And so that's the super 3D structure. So I know that was a lot. Um, so hopefully you understood that. Uh, the big takeaways on proteins are actually what they're used for and that they're made of amino acids. Um, the rest of it, I just kind of hope you start thinking about when we talk about other things in class. Obviously, as always, if you have any questions or need any help on clarifications or anything, just go ahead and reach out to me and we'll set up a tutoring time. Thanks.